or free information, call 1 800 8117582 or visit matrixdirect.com. That's 1 800 8117582 or matrixdirect.com. Whoa! <laughs> I'm sure that was amusing, but unintended. My name's Chris, this is my YouTube channel, but uh, this is the first time you've probably seen my face here. I'm at my dad's place, new place, in Waverly, Ohio, out in the sticks. And I was about to start showing you the hillside behind the house, but uh, Two rather large, angry dogs just came off the hillside. And I had to take off. Um, we'll go outside in a minute. They look like they're moving away. Uh, anyway, here in Waverly, Ohio, it's in Pike County, about an hour south of Columbus. Let me go scope around outside. Hi, I'm out here on a hillside behind the house, not 15 feet from the front door, and uh, I just wanted to show you a little souvenir of my last night here. This is uh, my second day, so last night after sitting at a campfire, me and my father were walking back towards the house, and right out in the driveway he was startled by an object at his feet, and uh, we shone a light on it, and uh, I don't know if you can see here, it was this guy. Now, if you can't tell by its markings from there, this is a copperhead. It's the most common venomous snake in this area. Um, our only other venomous snake usually being the timber rattler. You have to be really careful in this part of the country with copperheads because they've become so well adapted to the leaf litter on the forest floor, their coloration allows them to blend in almost perfectly. Um, when you're hiking in this area, you don't have to move slowly, but you need to be alert. You need to be aware of your footfalls. If you're stepping over a log, make sure you check over the log. That's why I always carry a pole. I check with the pole before I step. And uh, they, uh, they can strike about a third of their body length. And uh, their, well, their first instinct is to run, of course. They'd rather leave you alone than have to fight. But if cornered, they will strike. And it can be a very painful bite, though it's rarely fatal nowadays. Um, after we dispatched this fellow, I threw him up here on this hillside. And uh, I come out this morning and noticed that right beside him lay this. Now, I was wondering at first if this was from the same snake. I was hoping that it was. But uh, it's very fresh, and it's likely that... He molted just before we spotted him last night. I'll bring these a little closer so you can see better. I'm going to keep this snake skin for my father. That way he can have a little piece of the animal that could have had a piece of him last night. Check it out. This is a very fresh, very nice skin. It's uh, somewhat rare to find them all in one big, long, beautiful piece like this. The snake itself is about two and a half feet long. And he was in the process of eating a lizard. And it's a good thing that his jaws were occupied last night when my dad stumbled upon him. Because my dad's foot was in striking distance. And uh, had, had the snake not been, you know, the, liz the lizard's legs were sticking out of its mouth. Had he not been busy, he'd have probably, he'd have probably bitten and envenomated my dad. Um, I'll show you the markings here so you know what to look for. This is a... Very hard snake to spot when you're in the woods. And we almost mistook him for... There's a tick on me. Almost mistook him for the eastern milk snake, which in this area has... developed almost the exact same coloration. In some areas they can be different colors. It's a similar pattern, but they've almost the exact same color as this copperhead here. I don't want to uh, get too gruesome, 
but if I can show you his head here, um, one of the best ways to identify a venomous snake, besides you know being bitten, finding fangs, is by its pupils. If you look closely, you can see it's got we call them cat's eyes. All venomous snakes have that slit pupil, and all non-venomous snakes, with the exception of the Chinese python, have round pupils. Yeah, one guy you do not want to meet up with in the woods, because that can be very painful. We'll leave him up there. Vultures need to eat too. All right, I'm going to take you up over the ridge and show you the bowl behind the house here. There's a almost a 200 foot drop in elevation over there. Well, almost 200. It's 260 foot drop in elevation. And uh, I'm going to take the skin back up to the cabin. All right, I'm down here about where we dispatched that snake, and I've been looking for the lizard that he was swallowing when we stumbled upon him. There was a, a good chance, I thought, that after he swallowed that lizard, and after we killed him, that we could split the stomach open. And we did, and lo and behold, the lizard crawled right out, still alive, missing his tail, but they do that on purpose. Uh, he crawled out, still alive, and scampered over into the leaves. And uh, I came out here this morning to make sure that he had uh, moved away, because I knew that if he had been envenomated by the snake, he was probably going to die rather quickly. But uh, it seems that he moved off and got away just fine, which is interesting. I mean, I hate to steal another animal's lunch like that, but uh, a copperhead that close to the house, it's, sorry, it can't stay. Um, I just thought that was amusing, and uh, we <laughs> killed the snake and saved the lizard that had already been eaten. I can't imagine if lizards could talk what he'd be telling his buddies. <laughs> All right, I, uh, I hung the snake skin right up here by the front door on the cabin, and hopefully you can get a good look at just how long the snake really was. It's a good sized serpent there. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, some people say that uh, copperheads give off uh, an aroma uh, that smells like cucumbers. And they say that, that this is, you know, one of the ways that you can, you know, tell if, if the snake you're playing with is a copperhead or if you're near a copperhead. And uh, I've never smelt it. And I know that a lot of snakes, well, Almost all snakes secrete um, a, a, a fluid that uh, that's very very strong odor, and it's kind of an alert to predator animals, or you know any threatening animal. And uh, I I didn't smell cucumbers. I was more concerned with uh, let's not get bitten. <laughs> the path that goes up the woods is just down this way. I'm going to. Uh, Shut the camera off since it's on top of my hiking pole and uh, and move up over the ridge.